Cavalcade of America, starring Zachary Scott as young Abe Lincoln in the store that winked out. Presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Good evening. This is Bill Hamilton. Among DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry is rug anchor. To make your home a safer home, one of the things you should watch are small rugs which slip and slide, especially rugs at the head or foot of a flight of stairs. You can help eliminate such danger spots in your home by using DuPont rug anchor sponge rubber underlay. Rug anchor goes between the rug and the floor and helps prevent the rug from slipping. Waterproof and mothproof, it also keeps dirt from working up into the underside of the rug. Ask for DuPont Rug Anchor at leading rug and department stores. Rug Anchor is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Now, Zachary Scott, starring on the DuPont Cavalcade of America in the store that winked out. A memoir in ballad and drama of young Abe Lincoln on the prairies of Illinois. Time, 1832. The Black Hawk War. <laughs> Abe, wake up. What is it? I think I saw an engine. Where? Poking his head over the hill. Oh, that's only another rabbit. Oh. Go on back to sleep, Bill. I'll poke up the fire some. Two friends by the fire on the prairie. One hardly much more than a babe. The lanky young soldier named Barry... With a lankier one they call a Abe? Oh, what is it now, Bill? Oh, I can't sleep. I keep thinking. We've been out here a month, and so far we ain't even seen an engine. That's why I think I'm going back to New Salem, and you'd ought to come back with me. Ought I? What can I do back there? Well, lots of things. Yeah, but what would I do for a living? Well, you clerked in Ophid's store. And Ophid went bankrupt. Well, there's rail splitting, hog butchering, blacksmithing. Correct. And they're all professions that don't require a knowledge of reading and writing. The trouble is, I like reading and writing, Bill. You know what I'm going to do? What? Sign up with a militia for another month. Well, what'll that give you? Well, it'll, it'll give me more time to think. What about? The future. Why can't you come home and think about the future there? Because I'd, I'd be too close to things. What a man needs for thinking purposes is, is perspective. And there's no place like out here to, to give it to you. Out here in the deep woods with God Almighty all around you, letting you know how really small you are. Now, Bill, you go on back to New Salem tomorrow. I'll, I'll see you later in the summer. <laughs> Well, Abe, now that you have to go, we're going to miss you and your stories around the campfire. Well, then it's a good thing I'm leaving, Major, because I'm plumb run out of new ones. And when a man starts repeating himself, it's a sure sign it's time for him to go home. <laughs> Speaking of home, how are you going to get there? I guess I'll walk, Major. What happened to your horse, Abe? Did you sell him? No, sir. Did you give him away? No, sir. He uh, was stolen. One of those trappers you're always befriending? Yes, Major. Abe, you're going to get in trouble all your life trusting people the way you do. I'm warning you, people aren't that good. Well, you see, Major, every time I see a hungry-looking fellow critter with his belt kind of pulled in tight, there's one thought that always pops into my head like a shot. There, but for the grace of God, go I. I see. You see, I figure out that well, there are nine out of every ten people you meet are really good people. You oughtn't to call a man a thief before he's given a fair trial. From what I've heard of some of these European countries, when a man is hailed into court, he's... Well, he's got to prove his innocence. It's presumed he's guilty by the very fact that somebody brings charges against him. But it's different over here. In America, when a man is brought into court, why, 
It's presumed he's innocent. And you've got to prove that he's guilty. The proof is on you. And that's the way it should be. Abe, you ought to be a lawyer. You know that? Yes, sir. Major, I'm going to stand for the Illinois State Legislature. What do you think? Think? I think it's a wonderful idea, Abe. Furthermore, it's my conviction you'll make a fine legislator, too. Yeah, but uh, what happens if you don't get elected? Well, I'll be back to rail splitting or, or floating rafts on the river or anything I can turn my hand to until the next election. And I'll stand again. Good. Well, goodbye, Major. I guess I'd better start walking. I've got to get to New Salem in time for the election. Do you know what the voters are thinking? As you stand in your squeaky new shoes. Why, they never heard of Abe Lincoln, much less of your outlandish view. Gentlemen, Gentlemen and fellow citizens, I know you've never seen me before in this part of the state, but I presume you all know who I am. No, no where do what's Come your name? On, don't keep it a secret. Well, I, I thought you might know. Guess I was wrong, and not for the first time, neither. <laughs> my name is Abraham Lincoln. I've been solicited by my friends to become a candidate for the legislature in the state of Illinois. My politics, folks, are... A short and sweet like an old woman's dance. <laughs> First off, I'm for Henry Clay. I'm in favor of a national bank. I'm also in favor of the internal improvement system and a high protective tariff. These are my sentiments and political principles. If elected, I shall be thankful. If not, it will be all the same. I thank you. Name? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. How does it vote? How do you vote? Lincoln, Cartwright, Taylor, Morris, or Stewart? I vote Cartwright. Another one for Cartwright. Another one for Cartwright. Next. Samuel Hopkins. Samuel Hopkins. Samuel Hopkins. How does he vote? How are you voting, Sam? Friends and neighbors, gives me great pleasure to cast my vote for that honorable gentleman. That outstanding pillar of the community... Uh, uh, no electioneering, please. ...who, upon one occasion after another, has rendered his invaluable service... Uh, uh, no to, uh, electioneering, uh, please. Now, how do you vote? Cartwright. Yeah, another one for Cartwright. One more for Cartwright. Now, who's next? Come on, now, step up. It's past supper time. I'm getting hungry. Come on, now. Who is That election, a whole lifetime is lost in a day. You're in need of a friend and affection, just someone to show you the way. Well, Bill. Well, Abe, I hear you got licked. I got licked, Bill. Come out seventh in a field of 12. Not exactly what you'd call a good showing, was it? Oh, if more people know, Jabe, they'd have voted for you. Just like us here in New Salem. Well, of course, standing up for Henry Clay didn't help me none. And I did find out one thing about myself in this campaign, Bill. Oh? It's kind of discouraging for my political future. What's that? Well, I never was under the delusion that I was a howling beauty. But when strangers see this long, tall drink of water approaching with them skinny legs of mine opening and shutting like a pair of animated scissors, it sort of strikes them funny. Uh, it's kind of hard to take a man's politics serious when you're laughing at him, Bill. Abe, do you recollect that night with the militia around the campfire? Oh, I recollect it. We talked about our future, remember? 
I, I've been thinking ever since about the way you handled yourself during those campaigns. Yeah. Well, that's why I think you and me get on together now, Abe. How about coming in with me as my partner? Your partner? Huh? Rowan Herndon knows half the store, and I own the other half. You could buy out his share. We'd put up a new shingle over the door. Barry and Lincoln, general merchandise. Barry and Lincoln. Oh, listen, Abe, you've got imagination. So have I. And that's what this town needs. An up-and-coming establishment run by young folks with young ideas, with spit and vinegar and get up and get. Well, what do you say? Well, how much? Herndon how... would sell out for $250. I... I... Well, I asked him as soon as I heard you licked an election. Why'd you do that? Oh, because there ain't nobody I'd rather be partners with than Abe Lincoln. Thanks, Bill. And it's a, it's a mighty interesting proposition, only I haven't got $250. You could sign a note? Herndon wouldn't accept it. He would if I endorsed it. Would you do that for me, Bill? There ain't nothing in this world I wouldn't do for you, Abe. Is it a deal? It's a deal, Bill. <laughs> Young Abe, no more glory, just calico, pickles and hay. In the store, they must take inventory. There's no Indian fighting today. Twelve and a half bolts of Lindsay Woolsey homespun. Twelve and a half Lindsay Woolsey. One extra large candle mold dented. One candle mold extra dented. Seventeen cups without saucers. Seventeen cups. We got cracks in them, haven't they? Oh, not very big cracks, Abe. Of course, if you get persnickety and look at them real close. I'm afraid the women in New Salem are downright persnickety, Bill. Yeah. Next. Well, let's see now. There's a couple of combs. Nice looking ones, too. Too bad they got teeth missing. And buttons, lots of buttons. Oh, well. Good morning, Ann. Good morning, Bill. Hello, Abe. Good morning, Ann. What can we do for you? We're just going over our inventory here. Got plenty of stock on hand. You wouldn't like a nice set of unmatched buttons, would you? Well, I, I don't think so, thank you. No, didn't reckon you would. I came in to see if you had a length of white dimity. Dimity? Well, uh, now... Bill, do we have anything in stock called Dimity? Dimity? Never heard of it. But we have got plenty of Lindsay Woolsey, 12 and a half bolts of it. Well, maybe you don't know what Dimity is. It's dainty and light. Oh, it looks lovely made up in a summer dress with ruffles and... it's and... perky and, and you can kind of see through it? That's right. I had a dress of it last summer. I used to wear it Sunday. Yes, yeah, I remember. Well, you're right, Lindsay Woolsey wouldn't do for you at all. Wouldn't look near perky enough. Well, Abe, if you're having trouble selling it, I, I might take some anyway. Oh, no, I, I wouldn't let you. Abe. In fact, I I don't think we've got anything here nice enough for you. Abe. Unless it's this china compote dish. Oh, no, you wouldn't like anything that was chipped around the edges. Well, I... I'm sorry, Abe. I'd like to buy something from you, but... Well, maybe we'll do better next time I come in. Goodbye. Goodbye, Anne. Abe. Oh, what were you so fired up about, Bill? I was trying to tell you that's no way to move your merchandise, talking it down that way. Sure, I know it, Bill. But I know, too, that there just isn't one thing in this store that's, well, it's anywhere near good enough for a girl like, like Ann Rutledge. store without buying sweet and of the corn silken hair for her ape will someday be sighing sweet words to the soft summer
listening to The Store That Winked Out, starring Zachary Scott as young Abe Lincoln on the Cavalcade of America, presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Abe Lincoln, recently defeated for the Illinois legislature, has purchased with young Bill Barry a half interest in a general store in New Salem. Uh, let's go inside and see the youthful partners at work. Bill, we better finish taking inventory today. Put it off long enough. Let's see, we know we've got 12 and a half bolts of Lindsay Woolsey in those bins. Uh, and... uh, Abe, Abe, listen, do you mind? It's, uh... well, it, it's kind of stuffy in the store. I'd like to go out and get me a bit of air, maybe up the river ways. <laughs> I hear that the catfish are biting pretty good. Perch, too. Oh, no. Abe, you know I wouldn't go out fishing during business hours. Of course I know that, Bill. Such an idea never entered my head. Well, I, I'm a businessman, Abe. Strictly business. Well, so long. So long. Oh, oh Bill. Huh? You'll find my fishing pole over to the shed. And there's a can of worms under the flat rock near the bridge. Well, I guess a man can't be expected to take inventory all by himself. Where'd I hide that book Bowling Green just lent me? Here it is, in with the split peas. Hamlet, Prince of Denmark by William Shakespeare. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here put in a fiction, a dream of passion, would force his soul so to his own conceit? Excuse me, sir. What's Hecuba to him or he to Hecuba? I said excuse me, sir. Oh, oh I, I beg your pardon, stranger. I was, I was just reading. Are you the proprietor of this establishment? One of them. My name's Lincoln. Mine's Billings. Uh, see that wagon outside? We're heading west, my wife and I and the children. Well, you, you're kind of cramped, ain't you, for a long trip like that? Well, we weren't when we started. You see, we, uh, we had a, an addition to the family. Oh, well, congratulations. It's a question of space, Mr. Lincoln. We got to leave behind one of them barrels or the new baby. And my wife's been expressing a preference for taking the youngster. <laughs> oh, women are peculiar that way, Mr. Billings. Uh, how much did you give me for the barrel and contents? What's the contents? Junk. A mess of junk from my mother-in-law's attic. I'm afraid I got more than enough junk. Right? Give me a dollar? No, you see, Mr. Billings, my uh, price... 75 man. cents. Well, it's not the price, Mr. Billings. I guess the barrel alone is 50 worth... cents. That's my lowest figure. Take her for that or I'll chuck it in the river. I'll take it. Might have some poison in it that would kill the fish. Just leave it in front of the store, please. When I'm finished with Mr. Shakespeare here, I'll, I'll come out and get it. Uh, what's in this barrel, Abe? That barrel? Uh-huh. Oh, that's the one I bought from that Billings fellow for 50 cents. Oh. What's in it? Oh, nothing but junk, he said. Well... Taking up space here. Space we need for this other junk. I guess you and me ain't very smart merchants, Bill. I don't understand it, Abe. Just look at this Lindsay Woolsey. We ain't sold it yet. Yeah, I know. Abe, do you suppose we made a mistake setting up a storekeeper's? Person, I, I, I don't think there's much future in it. Got your mind fixed on something, Bill? Well, yes. Abe, I'm, I'm thinking it'd be kind of nice to be a constable. Now, that's a good profession. No worries, never have bills to pay. All you got to do is go around arresting people who don't pay theirs. Bill, you thinking of standing for constable in the next election? Well, I, 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 I've thought about it, only... Well, I got you into this storekeeping. Oh, now, don't worry about me. I'm standing for the legislature again next year. Well, good, fine. What happens to the store, though, if we both get elected? Well, I... I guess it'll just wink out, Bill. Uh, Abe, our old major in the militia always said you ought to study for the law. What's holding you back? 
Oh, well, books and things. Uh-huh. Where'd I get the money to buy me some law books? No, Bill, as the fella said, the time is not yet. Now let's clean up the store so it looks respectable, huh? Well, that's done. Everything but this barrel I got from Mr. Billings. Uh, ain't you gonna look inside before throwing it out? All right, let's see what's on the top. Uh-huh. A china pitcher with a hole in the bottom. We got plenty like that ourselves. Uh-huh. There's a mess of pewter spoons all bent out of shape. Uh-huh. More busted crockery, one and out. Uh, uh, what, what's that on the bottom, them black things? Can't tell yet. Too much stuff on top. Uh, it looks like books. Pull one of them out, Abe. All right. Say, it is books. Huh? Big ones. Here we are. Now, what's the name of them? Can't tell yet. Wait till I blow the dust off. Craig, jump in Jerusalem. What's the matter? What is it, Abe? Bill. Huh? Bill, look what it says here, right here on the first page. Yeah? Blackstone's Commentaries on the Study of English Law. Is that the book, Abe? That's it, Bill. The book I need to study for the law. Now, give me a hand while we turn this barrel over to get the rest of those books. All right. But gentle, Bill. Gentle. Bill Berry is out hustling new votes. Lindsay Woolsey goes back on the shelf. Abe Lincoln is studying law notes And the store's taking care of itself Where do you keep the axes, Abe? Abe, I say Uh, where... uh, Oh, Mr. Farrell, didn't hear you come in. Well, I've been in for almost an hour, turning the place inside out, looking for an axe. An axe? Oh, why didn't you say so? We haven't got any axes, Mr. Farrell. It's nice to see you again, though. Here you're thinking of standing for the legislature down in Vandalia again. I am. Well, I'll vote for you, Abe. I'll vote for you for any office up to the President of the United States except one. I'd never vote for you for storekeeper, Abe. Gentlemen and fellow citizens, my name is Abraham Lincoln. My politics haven't changed much in two years. I'm for internal improvements, a high protective tariff, and I'm, I'm in favor of a national bank. These are my sentiments and political principles. If elected, I shall be thankful. If not, it'll be all the same. I thank you. He's off to the state legislature And then to the Congress he sent And the faith of the land in his stature is his faith when he's president. And once in a while he is thinking alone in the days of his prime of two young uns called Barry and Lincoln. And the store that winked out just in time. Our star, Zachary Scott, will return in a moment with a surprise. Now, Bill Hamilton speaking for the DuPont Company. We'd like to tell you tonight about Peter Hunt, 
an artist in Provincetown, Massachusetts, and a new idea he started in home decoration. A few years ago, while traveling in Europe, Peter was impressed by the simple designs European home craftsmen used on furniture, and an idea was born. Why not use these charming designs to give new beauty to old American furniture, too? For Peter knew that American attics and second-hand stores are crammed with sturdy old furniture too well-built to throw away, and yet not old enough to be antiques. Back home again, Peter gathered together some of this old furniture, removed its gingerbread decoration, painted it in bright colors, and added gay little figures and designs. Before long, there were magazine articles about Peter Hunt and his new idea. We in the DuPont Company promptly got in touch with Peter Hunt, and he helped us prepare a booklet about his easy way of transforming furniture. So easy that we call it Trans for Magic. Now he's helped us prepare a new and larger book with full-color pictures which show you just how to apply Trans for Magic to old pieces of furniture. This is a big 40-page book with nearly 20 large, brilliantly colored pictures of the finished articles. There are before and after pictures that show you how the Transfer Magic is performed. There is a whole section that shows you how to make the simple brush strokes of the various designs. With this helpful book, all you need is a little carpentry and a can or two of DuPont Duco enamel. Duco comes in black, a white that stays white, and 18 lovely colors that stay bright. You can turn an old radio cabinet into a desk or a blanket chest or a box for the youngster's toys. There are dozens of suggestions in this book, and it's fun, too. We'll be happy to mail you a copy of this big new book of Peter Hunt Ideas. Just send us your name, address, and 10 cents to cover postage and handling. Address the radio section, DuPont Company, Wilmington, Delaware. And you're ready to have some practical money-saving fun with Duco Enamel, one of the DuPont Company's Better Things for Better Living. Through chemistry. And now, our star, Zachary Scott. And now for that surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, the young lady who played Anne Rutledge on Cavalcade is not only named Anne Rutledge, she is the great grandniece of the girl Lincoln loved. Right, Anne? That's right, Zach. I was named for her. Have you ever been to New Salem, Anne? What about the store? Could it stay winked out? No, Zach. The entire village has been restored, and they call it Lincoln's New Salem. It's 17 miles northwest of Springfield and looks exactly as it did in the days when Lincoln was courting Ann Rutledge. Well, after having played Lincoln, I'd like to see that myself. Thank you, Ann, for appearing on Cavalcade tonight as your great-great-aunt, Ann Rutledge, the beloved of Abraham Lincoln. Cavalcade play was written by Arthur Arendt and was based on the book Barry and Lincoln, Frontier Merchants, The Store That Winked Out by Zerrell C. Spears and Robert S. Barton. The part of Bill Barry was played by Lyle Sudrow. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Bryan. The ballad was written by Virginia Radcliffe and sung by Jimmy Atkins. Next Monday, Valentine's Day, we will bring you a Valentine story. In a New England setting, it tells of Nathaniel Hawthorne's romance with the girl who became his bride, Sophia Peabody. Our star will be the popular favorite of the screen, Glenn Ford. This is Boy Scout Week, and Cavalcade salutes this great organization dedicated to building future citizens of our country. Zachary Scott is currently appearing in Warner Brothers' production of Flamingo Road. Cavalcade of America is directed by Jack Zoller and comes to you each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.